up as we go along in the schedule, but you know, we just wanted to give folks a little extra time to get here. Uh, so I'd like to formally welcome you to the Symposium on Diversity and LIS Education 2014. Uh, that makes it sound like it is now officially an annual event, if we're sticking a year after it. Um, the focus of this symposium, and apparently what is turning into this series of symposia, is to bring together researchers, professionals, students, administrators, other folks interested in the interactions between diversity, inclusion, information, and education. And this is a chance to have a discussion across the field about approaches and strategies for educating LIS students and providing continuing education for LIS professionals about diversity and inclusion, but also about the roles that LIS professionals play in terms of educating their communities about diversity and inclusion issues. The, 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 the symposium this year is sponsored by the Institute of Museum and Library Services and the Information Policy and Access Center at the University of Maryland. Um, I'm, I, my name is Paul Yeager. I'm, I'm one of the chairs of this event. I also am the co-director of the aforementioned IPAC um, and, and an associate professor here at the University of Maryland. Um, one of the other co-chairs, Mega Subramaniam, couldn't be here today because she's at a different conference. But the third co-chair is sitting right there, John Berto. In, in case you, you know, want to blame anyone for anything. This is our second one of these symposiums. Um, many of the people registered for this one were at the first one. And we are hoping to continue this as a series. Uh, we we, we need, need to find stable funding for it to do that, but we're working on it. Um, the first one of these events, for those of you who didn't attend, what was a major success, far beyond what we expected. Uh, we had 160 people at it. Registrations this year exceeded that, though apparently traffic may thwart us on that front. Um, yeah. But even just based on having more than 150 people register for each of them, it, it indicates, given how small our field is, that we're onto something important here. Uh, th you know, that this is a major area that we really, the symposium serves a really important function. And this year we've expanded the pool of speakers to allow for a greater range of views and perspectives on these different educational roles in terms of diversity and inclusion related to information. So we have folks who are coming from the background of looking at it as an experience in a formal way, and as looking at it in an informal way. Looking at it as something that happens in universities and looking at it as something that happens in cultural institutions, libraries, community centers, inside the community. In light of that, this year we, have, we, we called it, you know, the, the, the focus of the symposium, advocacy, outreach, and inclusion. So hopefully you'll see those threads going throughout. Our fantastic list of speakers today includes LIS deans, faculty members, and students. We have directors, administrators, and staff members from a range of institutions, libraries, museums, archives. And we have diversity professionals in, amongst the speakers. They're going to provide a, a, a really nice range of approaches, institutional perspectives, educational ideas, it should be a really rich range of things to consider today. We also have the honor of giving out the annual James A. Partridge Outstanding African American Information Professional Award. This award is given out every year between the iSchool at Maryland and the Citizens for Maryland Libraries. And we're also, it's really kind of cool because one of our speakers this year is a former recipient of the award as well, Michelle Hamiel, who you'll be hearing from after lunch. I am also <coughs> delighted, relieved, something. Um, this year, I'm going to be sharing the emceeing duties rather than doing them all myself. So at various points, you'll see uh, Brian Real and or Christy Kodama also up here. Um, they are both doctoral students here at the University of Maryland and um, my colleagues at IPAC. And they've also been both 
coordinators of what's happening today, Brian of the symposium itself and Christy of the poster session later. So when, when you, 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 you're listening to them, you're also listening to two of the people who, if they weren't doing what they were doing, this wouldn't be working. So, um, In exchange for spending your day with us, um, we, we, we hope to keep you intellectually engaged and well-fed. Um, I, I mention this because the folks who attended the first symposium really were big fans of the food. So we have the same folks doing the catering this time. So ho hopefully that will be as exciting this year. Um, that was actually a big request for, in feedback from the last one. Um, yeah, the symposium was nice, but the food, you know. So we're, we're going to get started. Um, very shortly. There's a few administrative things I want to point out. Um, the first thing is, if, if you didn't catch this when you were registering, if, if you're not of the University of Maryland and you're looking to be able to access the internet, the back of your name badge, mine doesn't because, you know, I work here, but the back of your name badge would have wireless access information. So if, if you want to get on the internet, you can. Um, if you didn't get a program, there are many still out front, or you can pull it up online using that wireless internet access. Um, for those of you who are speaking, you're going to have either Christy or myself, depending on what part of the day it is, acting as your official helper with keeping on track with time. So you'll get a, we're obviously adjusting the time frames as we go along, having started a few minutes late, but you'll get a five minute symbol so if you're moderating a panel, or if you're an individual speaker, however that works, um, please keep an eye on that. Um, and at some point, if you ignore that, you'll probably get a one minute signal, and after that, fl flailing arms, and possibly just get pushed away from the microphone. Um, we haven't actually worked out the process if someone refuses to step down. Um, so I think that covers most of the administrative stuff. Um, there will be a series of food breaks, I mean, we've got snacks, we've got lunch, um, it, 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 so hope, hopefully no one will, will, will be wanting for anything. Um, if you have questions,